The Telltale Heart. The story features an anonymous narrator obsessed with the diseased eye, which he calls Vulture Eye, of an old man with whom he lives. He finally decides to kill him. The crime is carefully studied and, after being perpetrated, the body is torn to pieces and hidden under the floorboards of the house. The police go to it and the murderer ends up giving himself away, hallucinatingly imagining that the old man's heart has begun to beat under the platform. The relationship between victim and killer is unknown. It has been suggested that the old man represents the father figure in the tale, and that his vulture eth may suggest some unspeakable secret. The ambiguity and lack of detail about the two main characters are in sharp contrast to the detail with which the crime is recreated. The tale was first published in Poe's friend James Russell Lowell's publication The Pioneer in January 1843. The Telltale Heart is generally considered a classic of Gothic literature, and one of its author's most important works. It has been adapted or inspired on numerous occasions and in different media. Plot the story is told by a narrator who insists from the start that he is a normal person, even though his senses are very acute. The old man he usually lives with has a cloudy, bluish eye, like a vulture's eye. This causes the narrator great anxiety, which reaches the point of wanting to kill him. One day when he discovers the old man's eye open while he sleeps, he makes up his mind and suffocates him with his own mattress. Then he cuts up the body and hides it under the floorboards, and erases all traces so they won't find evidence that he killed him. The police come to inspect the house, because one of the neighbors says he has heard a scream. The murderer calmly invites them, shows them the house, and leads them to the room where the dismembered corpse is. Soon, he seems to hear a noise that is growing. Thinking in horror that it is the old man's heart, that he is giving him away, he breaks down and confesses, crying out for the policeman to lift the floorboards. Analysis. The beginning looks like a dialogue, conversation, with one or more unidentified people. It has been speculated that the narrator is confessing to a guardian, a judge, a journalist, or a doctor or psychiatrist. This may be so because of the narrator's need to explain himself in detail. It is followed by a study of horror but, more specifically, the memory of it, as the narrator recounts events from the past. The first words of the text, it's true, are a confession of guilt. This introduction also serves to immediately capture the reader's attention to what is being told. From this point, as was typical of Poe, each word is focused on the progress of the story, which makes the telltale heart possibly the best reflection of its author's theories about what a perfect story should be. The engine of the story is the narrator's insistence, not on his innocence, which would be normal, but on his sanity. But this reveals a self-destructive drive, since it is trying to demonstrate sanity through guilt in the crime. His denial of madness is based, above all, on the systematicity of his homicidal behavior, on its precision and on the rational explanation of irrational behavior. This rationality, however, is undermined by his lack of motivation, there was no reason. There was no passion. However, the murderer claims that the idea haunted his head day and night. Thus, the final scene is nothing more than the result of the character's feeling of guilt. Like many other characters in traditional macabre literature, passions dictate his nature. And despite all his efforts, obviously, the claim to have heard the heartbeat from a distance, despite his acute sensitivity, is evidence of delirium and madness. Readers at the time must have been very interested in the theme of the allegation of transient insanity that the story recreates. The narrator claims to be sick with hypersensitivity, a similar motif appears in the character of Roderick Usher in The Fall of the House of Usher, 1839, as well as in The Colloquium of the Monkeys and Una, 1841. But Poe does not make it clear whether that hypersensitivity is real or imagined. If what he hears is true, they may simply have been ghoul beetles, as the narrator once claims to have heard them when waking the old man from his sleep. According to tradition, these insects signal imminent death. A variety of these beetles are known to rub against surfaces as part of a mating rite, just as others make clicking sounds. Henry David Thoreau suggested in 1838 that these bugs sound just like the heartbeat. On the other hand, if the heartbeats are the product of the murderer's imagination, then it is his imagination that loses him. The relationship between the old man and the narrator is ambiguous, neither is anything known about their names, their occupations and place of residence. This ambiguity is like an ironic counterpoint to the care of the detail that is manifested. The narrator may be a servant, or even his son, in which case the vultures could symbolize parental vigilance and even inherited principles of right and wrong. In such a case its elimination is comparable to that of the conscience of the good. The eye can also represent mystery, again playing on the ambiguous lack of detail about the characters. 
Only when the eye is seen open on the last night, discovering the secret, does the crime take place. Either way, the relationship between the characters is secondary, the main thing is the determination to commit the perfect crime. Poet Richard Wilbur has suggested that the tale is an allegorical rendering of Poe's poem, To Science, which depicts the struggle between imagination and science. In the telltale heart the old man would represent the scientific and rational mind, while the narrator would be the imagination. Julio Cortezer sees in the story the theme of Cain, expressed in Poe's work in three degrees, in The Demon of Perversity in its purest form, in William Wilson he illustrates the visual hallucination and in the telltale heart, the auditory one. He adds that the story expresses very well the sadistic obsessions of its author, and that the victim's eye will reappear in the black cat. The story also presents an admirable conciseness, a short and nervous phrasing that gives it a powerful oral value, of confession. Robert Louis Stevenson notes that little less than implausible sharpness on the slippery slope between sanity and insanity, that this and other Poe tales manifest, the telltale heart is an important contribution to morbid psychology. This story was first published by the Boston magazine The Pioneer in January 1843, edited by James Russell Lowell, for which Poe received only $10. The original includes a quote from Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, from his poem A Psalm of Life. The story was republished, with some change, on August 23, 1845, by the Broadway Journal. Longfellow's citation was omitted in this edition, as Poe thought it was plagiarism. Point 20 it was reprinted several more times during Poe's lifetime.